So a small, you know, 100 grams of glucose, fine, but don't do it all the time because your body over a long period of time is actually not meant to have that. Our bodies are meant to actually eat sugar in season to get fat for winter hibernation. And at that time, when we eat sugar in season to get fat for winter hibernation, it drives behaviour towards eating more and storage of fat. And then we burn that off in our hibernation fasting period. That's what happens in the animal kingdom. The benefits of fruit are clearly overstated, both by the corporate world and by nature. So there's a talk of mine, is fruit good or bad for you, which stemmed out of a debate with a professor of nutrition. If you're an animal, fruit will drive behaviour. So you'll see the fruit, which is advertised in nature by being bright and shiny and sweet. It will then drive you to eat it because, A, you're attracted to it. You'll go and find it. You'll eat it. Animals will do this in the wild all the time. They'll eat it one day before you want to eat it as a human because they'll just wait for the sugar level to go up. They will <clears throat> gorge themselves on it. It will turn into fat for that winter hibernation and they'll lie around in a lethargic phase. I don't know if you've ever seen those pictures of monkeys that are actually gorging themselves on fruit and then they're lying around in a drunken stupor. Guess what fructose does in the liver? Fructose gets converted by down the aldehyde pathway into alcohol. Over a long period of time, if you drink too much alcohol, you'll get non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, one of the causes of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. If you eat too much sugar over a period of time, you'll get non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And I, you know, a part of this, I think, is actually what is related to children's motivation. We've got gen you know, generations of kids who are not wanting to go out and do stuff but food is part of that. And if they're actually, if you actually sat down with your five-year-old and your seven-year-old and gave them a glass of beer or wine every day, it, you, wouldn't, it, you wouldn't expect good health outcomes. Well, that's what sugar does in the liver. <clears throat> that's just one of the pathways of sugar, of fructose in the liver, down the aldehyde pathway is into alcohol production. And so one of my slides has got, you know, put fructose in and you've got a glass of red wine out the side. Again, I'm simplifying complex biochemistry, but that's what it does. The other thing that fruit does, or what fructose does, it actually stimulates um, ghrelin. So ghrelin is a hormone which is produced by the stomach to give you the tummy rumbling, and it makes you feel hungry. Well, fructose stimulates that. Fructose also inhibits leptin. So leptin is a hormone secreted from our fat. So if you've got plenty of fat on board, plenty of storage, the well, leptin is secreted, and it tells your brain, stop eating. Fructose comes in when you eat it, tells you and inhibits that pathway. So you're lo losing these pathways of inhibition or you're gaining the pathway of stimulation to make you hungry, which makes sense if you're a possum or if you're a squirrel or something trying to get hold of an enormous amount of sugar and carbohydrate so you can get fat for winter. So literally you can overeat and again we see that in society you put sugar on the table but literally that food is laced with sugar so that you will eat more you will also get a bit thirsty because sugar and carbohydrates in combination you need more insulin to produce that insulin in your store more water so you get more thirsty so it's a perfect thing to put in food in restaurants it's a perfect food to put in food by the processed food industry because it will drive behavior before you to eat more it's like if you open up a packet of chocolate biscuits, it's really hard to eat one. In nature, it's really hard to eat one cherry. If I give you a bowl of cherries, who can eat one? 